Welcome, welcome everyone to the Simon Dan podcast, the place where science and conspiracy collide. It's episode 29. Welcome. How you doing? How are you all doing? Hope you've had a good week. Uh, I've had a terrible week. I won't go into details, but it's been pretty bad. Uh, cat's nose. But anyway, let's bring him. Up. Let's bring him on. Joining me again this week is the co-host that is more popular than actual cats. Cats the musical and the cat from Red Dwarf. It's cats. <laughs> How you doing, mate? I'm doing very well. Doing very, that was an that was an introduction and a half, that mate. I'm not sure I could be ever more popular than Cats and Red Dwarf. The Cat from Red Dwarf, though. Uh, I don't know. I think you can. I think you can. It, it, like it's, it's, you, it's you a claim. You are a very popular guy, so I, I think I think you should uh, give yourself a little bit more credit. Well, I'm the most popular guy, nicknamed Cats in my street. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear, oh dear. Uh, anyway, mate, how you been? Yeah, really, really good. Uh, looking forward to seeing uh, Bezos fly tomorrow. Looking yes, to yes, absolutely. I was going to talk to you about Virgin Galactic, actually. I was going to talk to you last mm. week, but you weren't here, were you? Um, no, unfortunately not. I was trying to preempt what they would say, the Flat Earthers, about the Virgin Galactic flight. What do you think? It's funny you should mention that because I've decided it's time for me to make a video and a couple of days ago I went on a lot of Flat Earth channels and I just posted the question, what do you all think about the Richard Branson flight? And um, so I've had some pretty direct responses. Uh, a Flat Earther named Flatzoid F.E. Oh, yeah, no, him, it was yeah. A, yeah, he said it was a marketing stunt. And I said, oh, that's very interesting. Have you got any proof for that? He said, yes, I used to work in marketing. Uh, so that's thoroughly debunked. Um, I had uh, somebody else tell me, I forget whose channel it was on now. It will be out in the video saying that um, that it was it, it never left the ground. Uh, somebody else okay. told me that, unfortunately, it didn't happen because they went to space, but space doesn't exist. So it was well and truly debunked, yeah. I, I don't know how they can, because obviously... Uh, they spent a bit of time weightless, didn't they? So mm. the vomit comet, as we know, can do what sixty seconds max uh, of yeah. the weightlessness. I mean, it was way longer than that. I, I don't know how they can possibly refute it, but as you say, I'm sure they will come up with uh, one or two ways. I'm, I'm itching to get some videos from them to uh, to, to debunk. Um, should we bring the guests on? Let's do it. Yeah, cool. So join us this week. We've got two guests. First up, we have prolific flat earther and flat earther. No, he's not a flat earther. Uh. Prolific flat earth and 5G debater and debunker MC2. How are you doing, buddy? <laughs> I'm good. Hey, no music? I, what's no, up no, 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 no. Oh, uh, oh, my gosh. Cats uh, gets, gets, gets music. He moaned at me for okay. like half, half, like 20 episodes or something. He didn't have music. So I had to get... Oh, something. all right. A well, couple more episodes, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> how are you doing? You all right? I'm great. Good, good. Is that is that um uh, the Lego behind you? The, the Lego. It is. I it's, need to get that. Uh, I have it, the ISS, and then the uh, the Saturn V. Yeah. yeah, I've got the ISS, but the Saturn V I need, uh, and also and down on the floor I have the shuttle in uh, the box still unopened. Yeah, I need to get the shuttle as well. Um, it's so sad, isn't it? But I love it. I can't. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. Uh, right, and join us as well, uh, as well as MC Toon, is a conspiracy theory researcher who helped MC Toon do his thing. It's Reynard Wilson. How you doing, buddy? Hey there. Lovely to, to be here on the Simon Dan podcast. I'm very oh, excited. Thank you. Thank you. No, see, no one does that. No one says, I'm gr I'm glad to be here on the Simon <laughs> Dan podcast. Reynard, thank you very much. You've, you've big this up. Always a pleasure. You've bigged this up. Uh, really, really appreciate it. So before we get into the to the meat of the interview, let's just get into how you guys do what you do. MC Toon, uh, when did you first get into debunking? Uh, let's we call it that. Yeah. Um, well, other than having uh, a childhood uh, where my mother was into everything that was a little bit um, okay off, uh, it was on YouTube. It was it was a result of a flat out hero uh, uh, sending that that challenge to you and Wolfie. Ah, yes. And, yes. and uh, to, yeah, to do the flight charts, which, of course, I have on the wall behind me, the flight charts I actually used to uh, to satisfy his demands of, of doing uh, three 90-degree turns on a triangle. That was my first video uh, series. I did a couple on that. Wolfie uh, mirrored my video and, and uh, got me started right there. So that was it. And then uh, I've just – I like doing the debates. The live debates are fun, yeah. and I do uh, – 
about one a week. I do a, a pre-recorded video of some sort. Often lately, it's been on 5G. Yes. Yeah, we'll get into that. Don't worry. Uh, yeah. I thought, cats. I thought you'd been around a lot longer than that like, uh, before the, the flat out hero thing. Well, well I mind the flat out hero thing was was only when, when I was really just getting going as well. About three, so I think it was right at the very beginning of, of most of us, wasn't it? Yeah. I just, for some yeah. reason, I just assumed that you'd always been around. I, it was yeah it was all it was all it was over two and a half years ago yeah now yeah well i've been going now three uh yeah. january it was january 2018 the first video so uh, yeah oh wow no three and a half blooming hell um so yeah i just assumed you're already around I, I i i guess i guess not but yeah that was brilliant that the uh the flout hero thing he i mean we know we knew what it was like, but uh, it it was it was great yeah. watching you and Wolfie just uh, play with him, basically, didn't you? Uh, it was good fun. We toyed with him. Yeah, you did, you did, and of course you've debated on on my channel as well, didn't you? you debated uh, Nathan Roberts. He's disappeared, hasn't he? He he did. Well, he said he was going to go to you know one of the alternative video platforms because he couldn't handle YouTube. But even that, I think, has stopped. He's yeah. he's not even there. I checked recently, and even those channels had nothing new. Uh, okay. Well, he. he he was the guy, if anyone remembers, who was ripping the, the science pages off, uh, the books, the, the science book pages off it in uh, in Target. Uh, and then he went and paid mm. for all the ripped up pages. Uh, <laughs> absolutely crazy. Uh, and Raynard, same to you. How about you? How did you get into this well, uh, conspiracy theory research? I'm a research? newcomer to this business. Um, okay. I found myself at the start of the lockdown uh, last March with a whole load of uh, time to kill. I, I used to perform comedy in london and, okay. and you know that became impossible uh, so so i just found myself sort of rage browsing the news uh, and i perhaps back in march i i became aware of a strange phenomena in which just as the lockdown was beginning just as we needed our telecoms infrastructure yeah people were starting to burn down telecoms towers and, and i became very curious indeed as to what could possibly be driving this this sort of you know self-destructive kind of vandalism, uh, and um, through a sort of a series of sort of investigations, I, I, I came across some answers to those questions. I, I found out who was encouraging it and and why they were doing it, uh, and eventually uh, that's how I met McToon because uh, he did a uh, very bizarre episode of his show with with one of the ringleaders of this uh, anti five G cult, and uh, you know that gave me the in I needed to, to start doing what I do, which was to, to infiltrate that organization and, and start to, to learn who they were from, from the inside. Uh, and eventually, yes, that, that was what allowed me to, uh, to meet McToon. Uh, and that's how we started doing stuff together. Yeah. And then you, so you kind of worked together quite extensively, didn't you, in, in this 5G stuff? Well, I've been helping McToon write and research some of his shows because there's an awful lot of stuff that needs to be discovered. There are a lot, a lot of some of the worst perpetrators. It, it's a bizarre thing that actually the, the 5G cult really is a, it's a UK phenomenon. There are yeah. US-based anti-5G people. There's the, uh, the whole RFK Junior outfit, which is the uh, Children's Health Defense Fund organization. Uh, while they are well-funded, they're sort of, small players in terms of the kind of influence they have. Whereas you have people like Mark Steele, Kate Chamorani, uh, yeah. these people, um, they, 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 they have an inordinate amount of influence amongst people who are thousands of miles away. And I, I think, you know, it, it, it's been quite useful to have people both side of the Atlantic. Uh, to, to find out really what's going on. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, I mean, we're here to talk about that 5G, these 5G conspiracy theories specifically. Now, I've made a couple of videos on 5G, uh, basically explaining uh, the, the, some of the conspiracy theories that we've heard. Uh, but let's just get it straight now. What exactly is 5G? Well, I'm going to hand that one to McToon, I think. <laughs> um, <clears throat> well, 5G is is mostly a marketing term. Uh, the the consortium of companies that define the cell phone standards uh, are called 3GPP. Okay. And every two years, they release an update to their specification. So release 15, which came out in 2015, um, was dubbed, or was it 2017? 
20, yeah, 2017 was dubbed by the marketers as 5G. So the group of, of features that was kind of the, the, the up-to-date features in release 15 was called 5G. So if something implements all of those things or a subset of them, it can be called 5G. But it really wasn't anything new. It was, there, there was absolutely no new technology as far as transmitting data wirelessly. It's still low power. Yeah. Uh, radio using certain frequencies. Uh, there are some frequencies that have not been used for cell phones before that have been allocated in the U.S., not in any part of Europe. So all of Europe is still using just the same frequency ranges. There's So when it comes to transmitting the data, there is absolutely nothing new at all. So I love to ask the anti-5G crazy people, what new feature of 5G is yeah. harmful and they never know it's always silence yeah um because because there is nothing yeah i was going to say 5g it's a really bad name isn't it because they can really grab hold of that can't they the conspiracy theory, and they can really run with it as it it's like some <laughs> it's like a baton isn't it they're like 5g anti-5g if it was a quite a complex name it'd be harder for them to do yeah uh, but people have short memories though um in the uk when 4g first came yes. out there was a group of conspiracy theorists who thought there was. 4g was going to kill us all yeah and even when 3g came out uh there were people who were similarly hyper skeptical of of this um very very scary sounding third technology that was going to kill us and, and so far none of these technologies have managed to uh, kill any substantial population of birds bees animals people insects woodlouse uh, whatever you name it they're still alive we yeah. still have them so why aren't they learning these lessons these people when 3g hasn't done anything bad and 4g hasn't done anything bad why are they not learning the lessons well, I think there's a lot of money to be made out of 5g fear scamming okay. there is a whole Leaders, industry yeah. yeah there is a whole industry uh, that, that sells protective products, um, you know, uh, shamanic workshops to ward your inner soul from the uh, the mystic energies of 5G. There's a lot of people selling a lot of products based on this fear. So this this delightful product McToon is holding, the Lemurian plug, okay. supposedly protects you from from things. Oh wow! Of course, L Lemuria is a fake, never existed nation similar to atlantis in fact they were warring with atlantis uh, okay. supposedly now is gone um the guy that invented this was visited by a lemurian and given some magical technology that he won't disclose Lucky and bugger. so so he puts this near that magical device and then it inherits the de the properties of the device um but actually this thing is actually it's just a wireless uh, you know press a button and it turns a switch on and off so it, that's gonna, all it is. Yeah, I was going to say, it looks like a, I've got like a Wi-Fi booster at home. It looks like one of those where you plug it in yeah, and it boosts your Wi-Fi. Yeah, it's much simpler than that. Okay. It's just a, a relay with a with a wireless and How much is that? Thing. This they sell for, this was around $50, Lots which is on the cheaper end of the spectrum. Uh, and of uh, 5G fake protection. Yeah. So I actually bought a three pack of these things that I use to turn on and off my Christmas lights at home. It's <laughs> quite a, a nice product for that. that. I mean, th that isn't even the most egregious uh, no, fake anti 5G product. I mean, the, perhaps the one that was most widely reported was the 5G BioShield, which was uh, right. famously recommended by the Glastonbury Town Council 5G uh, Advisory Board. 5G BioShield was nothing more than a. Uh, five dollar usb thumb drive containing uh 128 uh, megabytes or is it gigabytes or mega not much basically the sort of thing that you yeah. could you could buy for a for a fiver the idea. uh it, it was simply uh it, it contained some marketing material as pdfs on it uh, and, and it was sold for 350 dollars Oh, don't forget the shiny sticker. Wow. Oh, yes. Uh, oh. Now, was, was, was that bye -bye? Yes, it is. Yeah. So, so the 5G BioShield uh, was a normal USB thumb drive that contained stickers. And these stickers were allegedly imbued with a, a mystical energy, the, the likes of which that no uh, physicist other than uh, the, the equally mystical Dr. Lakey had, had ever discovered. And apparently, um, Dr. Lakey captures these particles himself. On a, in his mountain retreat, uh, using some kind of mystic coaxing, imbues the stickers with these energetic um, motes. 
Right. Um, we, we spoke to the, the, the person in the UK who, who's marketing this, uh, and he, he did confess that he didn't quite know how Dr. Lakey imbues <laughs> these stickers or had any way of knowing which stickers were, were sort of similarly enriched and which were not since they looked identical or how if this particle was massless and um, and sort of unable to interact with, with physical matter, how, how, detected. How, how is it actually stuck to a sticker? I mean, can you... Wow. We, we don't incredible. have these answers. That's but, incredible. Um, um, it, ironically, when I made my 5G video, I was getting a lot of comments. The, the YouTube... Uh, advert was a 5G hat, protective yes. hat, on my 5G video, which is telling people there was no conspiracies. It was I, ridiculous. I get that all the time on my 5G videos. People say that all oh, the time. Ridiculous. I, mean, I suppose a, a 5G hat with a, you know, uh, with, with some kind of metallic shield could reduce the amount of radiation to your head. Um, uh, whether you would or, actually need that, or, or, or it could it be could reflecting act, it. Yeah, yeah it could. It's an antenna, as uh, has been. <laughs> previously measured it actually does the opposite of what they want but yeah um Um, in in terms of the science cats i mean with with 5g they talk a lot about um they're worried about the five gigahertz 10 gigahertz they're worried about it's a big number to them and it worries them Mm. there really isn't a worry with that is there that that sort of high frequency well i think the thing is when you science communication um, I think it's fairly obvious there are certain trigger words, aren't there, with some people? Um, like you were talking about infusing particles and energy into that sticker, or, you know, and frequencies is another one. You know, the, to the people who were that way minded, who were conspiratorially minded, if, you know, they hear the words frequencies, they hear the words energies, and everything else kind of isn't really important. You know, they, they grab onto those two words. So, yeah, the big numbers and the big frequencies, and it's not, you know, I would say it's, it's, it's nothing to worry about, but those key words that they play on, that's what that's what gets people, isn't it? Yeah, and they're not that big frequencies anyway, are they? If you're looking at the whole electromagnetic spectrum, they're actually really, really small. Uh, um, well, uh, yeah, I mean, you look at look at you know, it's hard to like a gamma ray, is it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's one of the the big ironies of this, which is you know, so so all cell phones that are available today use microwave radiation. So yes. uh, yeah. that's in the sort of you know megahertz or, or low gigahertz range of frequencies. So. Uh, optical light, the kind that we know can blind you or give you sunburn. Uh, each 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 quantum of, of, of light is, is, is about a thousand times more energetic. And the amount you get on a sunny day, such as today in London, uh, is going to be many, many thousands of times more intense than, than what you might get from a, uh, well, you know, the cell phone in your hand or, or the cell transmitter 50 meters away. Yeah. Uh, the, the 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 fear that the that some of these uh, fear scammers are trying to stoke stoke is based on this lack of perspective that people have. Absolutely. That, that yeah, yeah. I remember saying in my video, you don't see any um, anti uh, remote control videos because obviously the infrared in that is much higher frequency than the than the five G. <laughs> um, so we've got this guy uh, in the UK. We mentioned him already. He's really pushing this anti five G agenda. Uh, he's called Mark Steele. Can you tell us a bit about him and what he's about? <laughs> uh, he, yeah, he's kind of a dirty guy. He, um, <clears throat> he, he plays himself as if he's an expert, but he is not an expert in, in anything that he says he is because he has in his, some of his earlier interviews, he declared that he was not a microwave radiation expert and that he is not an electronics expert, uh, which are the, two types of expertises that you would definitely want to have when it comes to analyzing 5g or any cell phone network. Yes. So he has, he has taken these, he thinks streetlights that were installed in Gateshead where he lives in 2013, which is a few years before the 5g specification was written. Okay. He thinks they are 5g. Um, and that they are somehow a kill grid to intentionally kill people. Right. And, and also somehow that he was leaking this information and not, you know, having it directed at him. I don't know how that would happen, but uh, if, if they really were, as he says they were, I don't know how he could have done what he did. Uh, but they are, they are just low power wireless, uh, you know, control devices to turn the lights on and off. Yeah. That's all they are. And so he, but he, what he did is he pulls out this, the, the, somebody sent him a unit and he pulled out an antenna and I have a, I have one of them right here. Yeah. I think it, I remember it. Yeah. It's, it's a 
one of the most basic antennas that exist. Um, it's a one quarter wave monopole antenna. Now, here's the problem. Mark Steele doesn't even know what a monopole antenna is. He, um, I can send you some audio clips of him being confused about a monopole where he actually thinks that a monopole is just a pole where he says that the, this is awesome, the windmills on the windmill farms are actually monopoles because it's a pole. Right. Right. Not <laughs> understanding that a monopole is <laughs> the type of antenna you learn on day one of antennas class. Amazing. And if you so, ever read a book on antennas, it's it's the first chapter. Okay. So I, I spent some time talking with, with Mark Steele just to try and understand who he is. Yeah. Um, he's um, a sort of late fifties guy from Gateshead in the northeast of England. Um, from what we can tell, he he's had a bit of a colourful life. Um, in the in his early days, he, according to newspaper articles about him, uh, he worked as a fitter and also a bouncer. So if you're American listeners, the bouncer is British slang for a doorman, somebody who uh, keeps the peace at, outside a nightclub or a pub. Um, we know, I mean, you may be made very, why was he in the newspapers? Well, he was in the newspapers because in the year 1990, he accidentally shot a teenager. He was uh, convicted, I think, of malicious wounding and uh, illegal possession of uh, wow. ammunition. Okay. Um, and, you know, th therefore, he, he became a person of, of interest. According to Mark, he is a weapons expert. He claims to have worked at a never-specified project for the Ministry of Defense. Uh, he claims to be somebody who knows all about uh, microwave energy weapons. And, and hence, when uh, Gateshead Council started installing uh, these lighting control systems in the, the lampposts in, in the, the town of Gateshead, he claimed to have immediately recognized these because they were something to do with his, his personal expertise. Now, right. it, it seems very unlikely that um, the MOD would have employed somebody after uh, such a serious criminal conviction. Uh, we, we can find no records at all of any kind of uh, employment that, that he's ever had in a position of scientific responsibility. And when I spoke to him at length, um, so I... I went undercover in, in his organization yeah. and, and did a series of interviews with him with the, the, the purpose of actually debunking what McToon was saying about him. That, right. that was the cover story, basically. Okay. Okay. Nothing he said at any time betrayed any kind of uh, formal study into, the, into electronics or, or radio systems. Um, I, I, I basically, I came to the conclusion that he was somebody who got good at bluff and bluster and had managed to convince uh, a very large amount of uh, ignorant people that, that he was in some ways uh, an expert. And, and despite, despite my opinion, I, there are still many thousands of people who consider Mark Steele to be an expert. You, you need only search for yeah. posts about him. People are still posting about Mark Steele, refer, referring to him as a, you know, a local scientist or an expert. When he, he quite plainly isn't. Yeah. Sure. So uh, when you were undercover, how uh, how close were you? Did you get to him? Did he trust you at all? Well, I, I think we, physically we were about two hundred miles apart because he was in Gateshead and I was in London. Okay. Uh, he trusted me enough to to answer quite a few things very candidly in a way that we'd we'd never seen him speak before. Um, the, the, I, the the way I had got to him was via one of the other people uh, in his Gateshead crew, a, a chap called Kim Tate, who makes all the videos for, for Mark Steele and was right. for some time involved with the Savers Now political party, which is the, the organization set up by Mark and Graham Steele, the, the brothers, to, from what I can tell, to, to raise money. Uh, so they, they, you know, they, they found that it was a, a good way of uh, funding their operations to do it all through a political party. Right. Uh, and, and, and so they were all very annoyed with, with Mark, with, with, they were all very annoyed with McToon because he was uh, debunking their claims. He, he was pointing out, uh, uh, he was pointing out their errors. And, and I, so I came along to, to Kim Tate and, and I said, well, isn't that, that, that McToon guy, he's, he's a bit awful, isn't he? Let's, <laughs> what we should do is we should, and this was a this, this was a mind blowing idea of them. Why don't we gather our facts together and present them in an organised way, and prove the other side wrong? <laughs> uh, 
and, and literally <laughs> minds blew. And, and uh, you know, it, it was like, a, what, you can win arguments this way by <laughs> saying correct stuff and, uh, and marshalling your ideas in a coherent way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Never heard of it before, but uh, and, and so that was my task. I, I was the sort of the inquisitive man who was going to help put Savers Now's uh, message on, on the right track. Yeah, and of course, I had an ulterior motive. I, I was sure. there as a journalist trying to find out well, what, 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 who are these people? What, what are they really doing? And so, in doing so, I, I, I recorded a series of very long interviews. We, we have hours and hours of material in which I'm asking uh, Mark Steele questions. I've got to say. It got questions, yeah. Got very, very tedious to have uh, this this Geordie man being wrong at me for hours and hours a week. <laughs> by by the end of it, I, I just confessed them, guys. Look, I, I've had enough. I, I told them who I was. So you blew your own what cover. I was doing. I did. I was just <laughs> so frustrated with them. It, it, Brilliant. Uh, I, I just. So if 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 people are are wondering, all of these these long these three interviews are available. I have them. Um, linked off of three different videos that right. Reynard and we'll, we'll I did. We'll put links so, in the description. Yeah, yeah we, 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 we talked about it, we did clips, and then the, the full raw unedited is, is available off of those oh, two. Amazing. I definitely have to catch that. That's superb. Love it. So yeah, so Mark Steele, so both of you aren't on his Christmas card list then this year. <laughs> well, more than, I, he definitely not. No, he, <laughs> he, um, uh, he, he calls us all sorts of very bad names. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I, look, He's angry with us. We've hurt his feelings. I get it. Um, I, I mean, you know what? If Mark Steele would stop fear scamming innocent people, stop telling lies about technology he knows nothing about, I think we both leave him alone. He would, he would no longer be interesting to us. Uh, you know, just just you know, take up televangelism. That's it's yeah. a it's a safe. That's alternative, right? It, it just so enough. happens that that we're we're both from an engineering background. Yeah. And, you know, we both hate scammers. Yeah. And, and so, so Mark Steele has made himself into the, the perfect subject for our rage. Yeah, love it. <laughs> um, but I mean, on a, on a more, I mean, it's, it's fine chatting about Mark Steele and debunking him. But on a slightly more serious note, some people are actually taking legal action against 5G, aren't they? What's, what's that about? Um, so there, there is a, a two uh, legal cases in the in the... The UK there one um, ended a while ago, and uh, a one that just ended. So this one in particular that I've covered a few times on my channel called Action Against Five G. Yeah, they're calling for a complete moratorium on five G in all of uh, England and Ireland, and trying to do this through a legal judicial review. Now the funny thing is, there's already been. The previous one was a judicial review okay. that that raised over seventy thousand pounds. This new one has raised over one hundred and sixty thousand wow. pounds. So together, do the math. A lot of money raised for judicial review. Both of them have been rejected. Gone, okay. done. Yeah. All that money. That is a hell of a lot of money. It, it it does make you wonder how many people there really are that that are are following this. Yeah, and none of them know what 5G is. No. They don't know what's bad about it. And I don't know if I should be angry that this money was wasted or amused that these people gave the money away to be wasted. Yeah. Somebody help me decide which which uh, feelings I should have, I guess. It's that I, I I can't believe that. I just I cannot believe that level of money for something like this. It genuinely it could not me. it could not have won. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of the more bizarre things. And we, we have spent our lives the last year or so investigating a lot of very bizarre things. Yeah. But there is a, a group of activists who are convinced, uh, but as McToon says, without actually knowing what it is they're opposed to, they are convinced that, that 5G poses an existential threat. Um, they coordinate massed objections. They... Uh, they organized some kind of legal representation and, and they, they, they do a lot of marketing to, to raise money. Um, so there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a large group of people for, for whom are, they're utterly convinced. But the, the case, the, the legal action against 5G case, is, is remarkable because of how completely bonkers it is. So yeah. we first became aware of it in summer of last year when um, one of the, the, the most prolific Facebook um, 
anti-5G groups announced with, with, with great fanfare that there, there was to be a new case led by celebrity, uh, the famous lawyer Michael Mansfield QC. So he is uh, quite a big shot in the, way, in the world of human rights lawyering. Okay. Uh, and, and that this case led by Michael Mansfield QC was going to um, achieve these, these you know, achieve, yeah, to, to halt 5G in the entire of the British Isles, despite the fact that 5G had already began its deployment in 2018. That this is a technology that was already mature, and you know you could already buy handsets. That that, that didn't seem to the the, the, un, the, the implausibility of, of their uh, objectives didn't seem to to stop them in the least. In fact, it only seemed to help them. Yeah. Um, they attracted, uh, let, let's say, some some bizarre claimants and some even more bizarre expert witnesses. So I don't want to mention any of the the names of the claimants because I mean, they're they're probably people who have in their middle ages have as we're all going to do unless we we run a lot like you dan we're all going to suffer some kind of ill, Ill health we'll we'll get gout and mystery pains and and you know our, our legs and limbs won't work as well and and, and sometimes people they blame that on old age and some people uh take to the courts and, and yeah. try and get some kind of retribution for the for the, the heinous crime of, of just getting old um you know so one of these ladies had uh emmy one of them had uh, cancer, uh, and one of them, we, from what we can tell, had some kind of skin disease. Look, you know what? I'm not a doctor. I'm not going to diagnose what, what, what these people had. But, but they all had a, a variety of very different sort of symptoms, none of which could be even plausibly connected to 5G or uh, radiation damage. Yeah. But uh, either they had found the lawyers or the lawyers had found them, and uh, uh, they, they were basically claiming that the, the government's deployment of 5G was responsible for their symptoms. Now, we actually went to investigate what was in the areas of these people where, you know, that, you know the, the, the main claimant, the person who claimed to have had a, a skin disease, well, the, the transmitters near her house weren't actually 5G at all. They, they, were, um, yeah. they were more streetlight controllers of the kinds that, that McToon was showing a minute ago, which, which led us to believe that actually... Um, you know, even though this case wasn't about Mark Steele, it was Mark Steele's ideas that yeah. were somehow informing this case, making people believe that the streetlights were 5G, suing the government, uh, and failing spectacularly because they actually had no evidence. Um, the, the, the expert witnesses they brought in to, to bolster their case, well, there was a chap called Dr. Andrew Tresider. So he was one of the, the Glastonbury experts, the, the man who <laughs> recommended the 350-pound USB stick. There yep. was a, a chap called um, uh, Professor Tom Butler, who is a... Go, go on, McToon. Yeah, Tom Butler, uh, a university professor in Cork, Ireland, who who isn't uh, really in the field. He's a uh, business management uh, computer type thing. So he has, he's, he's one of their expert witnesses. He actually put together a document of several different claimed uh, EMF harm studies, right? So he has a bunch okay. of studies that he lists in there. Of course, looking at these studies doesn't help very much their case, because when you when you look at them, you say, oh, well, yes, this one did have harm that they identified at levels multiple times higher than the legal allowed limits. So not concerning the the the, (laughs) right. The evidence about, you know, EMF in the legal allowed range is all fine. So it is his his legal legal uh, or his his expertise is a bit um, unfounded and. And he didn't seem to really, I know that, that you would need to find harm in the particular power levels uh, yeah. that are allowed. Yeah. Um, uh, the, so if I were to keep listing bizarre things about this case. So uh, everyone in this case claims to be electrosensitive. So <laughs> electrosensi- electrical hypersensitivity is a right. purported disorder in which people claim to be able to feel uh, sense or feel pain as a result of exposure to microwave radio signals. Uh, the World Health Organization basically describes it as a delusion. They do cite wow. that exact same document in their complaint. Uh, so if you actually follow up their citations, you know, you can, you can go to the point where it basically the, the, the WHO says they're, they're talking nonsense. And, and, and so this whole case has been so spectacularly mismanaged. 
um, I, which which has caused me to suspect. You know, you know, what? I'm sure the lawyers involved are very professional experts. Yeah, but. At some point, they must have known that the case they were filing was futile. The expert witnesses that they were presenting were not credible. The, the claimants that they were putting forward as, as suffering from harm uh, were people who, who didn't seem to have any damage that was plausibly connected with the harms they were alleging. Uh, and yet those lawyers still got paid. Uh, and, yeah. and, and so... The, the, the winner is the lawyers in yeah, this case. Absolutely. The mind boggles. It really does uh, at, the whole, at the whole affair. Um, let's have a quick break. Uh, it's time for Cat's Curiosity. He's going to bring us a piece of science news that has interested him over the last week. Uh, what have you got, mate? Well, what I've got this week, it's not, usually, it's not as long uh, as usual, but it is something that I picked up when I was uh, doing a bit of research for one of the textbooks uh, I'm currently writing. Oh, yeah. I like to slip that in there every week. Yep, you do. Um, <laughs> if anyone, if anyone doesn't know, by the way, Katz is writing a textbook, uh, <laughs> just, just, just to make that. <laughs> just, yeah, get, getting that in as often as I can. Yeah. Uh, but no, I was doing some research on uh, Jane Goodall and animal behaviour, and I, I came across a paper about, um, about communication in bats. Now, I've long been a huge fan of animal communication, <laughs> as I'm sure we all have. Yes. Um, but what I heard here absolutely stunned me. I I obviously know that uh, things like bird song plays a huge role in, you know, in, in animals, being, uh, birds being able to identify sure. other individuals in the same species and sexual selection, etc. I know that bird song has different dialects. But <clears throat> what a guy called Josef uh, Pratt, that was his, his, his name in 2017, he, he did a study on Egyptian fruit bats and okay. he didn't look at the songs of the bats, so to speak. He looked at what they call the chatter, which are the other little bits of noises that they, they make. And he collected um, he collected some adults and some breeding pairs, and he, he, grew, he grew them in a controlled environment. And he looked at the interactions between the, the parents, each other, and the pups, and also the pups between each other and the parents. You know, he looked at how they communicated. And he built a database of over 300,000 communications wow which we can now access. And what he found, and this is where it's all going, because what he found actually really surprised me. I didn't know this was possible. He found that when the bats kind of chatter, right, yeah. they are able to determine exactly which bat one bat is talking to. And what? they can determine, yeah, I know, yeah, I know, yeah they, can, they can also determine the context of the conversation, whether it's to do with food, if food's on the way, whether it's to do with mating, uh, or whether it's to do with, I forget what the third one was, and I was so excited about it. But they can actually determine the, uh, the, the context of the conversation. And what they found was as well, was that the, uh, the way that the parents chatted, to, you know, the male and female chatted to their pups, was different how they chat to each other. So just like humans would almost speak in baby talk to the kids to yeah. try and bring them along. Yeah. Uh, the the, the fa uh, you know the father and the mother of your life pups they would change their tone and really simplify it in like their own version of baby talk when they were what? chatting to the kids and this wow. is this that's... is Egyptian fruit bat so that that's something I I wasn't aware of and it you know it did interest me a little bit so there you that go. is incredible I, I mean they are, I mean I guess they are mammals so uh, mm. they've got that I, I am shocked by that honestly I would never have thought that that's really me good neither. mate Listen, me Mick West was really impressed by the way with your uh, with your eighth continent news. Last week, I told oh, I God. told him about you it. Put that to him. Yeah, he was very very impressed with that. So, uh, well done, mate. Anyway, yeah, thank you, thank you. That's that's very. I'm gonna I'm gonna look into that a bit more. I think. Um, so guys, how dangerous? If we're gonna rank five G conspiracies compared to other ones, how dangerous is it really? I mean, the greatest danger is the amount of money that that people are uh, okay. deprived of. Yeah, but, but there is a huge industry scamming people out of their hard-earned money. And, and a lot of people who are scammed are people who are in a state of ill health, people who, who perhaps are reaching the end of their lives and, and may have more important things to spend their money on. Um, so uh, like they're, they're, they're thinking that the 5G is involved with their health, so they want to put money towards right, trying yeah. to combat it. Uh, yeah. I, when I first started researching this, I, I spoke to a lot of people on Facebook, uh, you know, uh, and there was a, a, a very frightened lady who who believed that her child's nosebleeds were caused by new 5G transmitters in the town. Right. Uh, and when I spoke to her, um, you know, she, she told me that, yes, I asked her how far away these transmitters were. It, it turns out they were four miles away. Right. So, you know, like, like, 
but but the, the amount of fear and and worry that, that these people are causing yeah. um mark I, Steele. if i can yeah finish that and i have a different thought well mark Steele has has promoted the idea that um the 5g is a bioweapon that is intended to activate nano antennas placed in the covid vaccines and um you know, he is one of the people spreading dangerous misinformation about fire. In fact, actually, pretty much, you try and find a, I guarantee you, you will not find an anti-5G activist who has clever and sensible ideas about vaccination. They are all part of the, the same conspiracy milieu. A lot of the, I'll, I'll come to you in a minute, MC2, and a lot of the, uh, uh, and the COVID anti-vaxxers were at Parliament today in the UK. Uh, one of the guys, Mark Sexton, and you, you mentioned her earlier, who's that nurse lady? Um, Shemirani. Yeah, she, Shemirani. she was there as well. Um, as was Mark Steele. Uh, was he there as well? Oh, not surprised. He was. Not yep. surprised at he all. He had an altercation with the police. Uh, what a surprise. Uh, and, and yeah, they're all there today. Uh, and you're right, they link in all together, don't they, all these sorts of uh, conspiracy uh, theorists in terms of the 5G and the COVID vaccine. What were you going to say, MC Team? Well, yeah, so I think that, that the money is is certainly a dangerous thing and, and uh, you know, people that are yeah. often not in a good financial position are wasting money on these things. But I think I think health is a bigger problem. If um, if you look at the, the legal action against 5G, the, the third claimant, the one I, I addressed in, in a couple of my videos, she got diagnosed by this quack doctor, uh, Dr. Tresseter, as having... EMF, our, our electrosensitivity, it absolutely definitely was not that. But that's the diagnosis she received. So yeah. my guess is that she did not go and actually find out what the real cause was. So um, she could have gotten relief potentially if it had been, been properly diagnosed. Yeah. But so, she didn't. So there's a lot of trust, isn't there, in these people? Uh, there, yeah, there's that. Yeah. There's... Um, there's um, uh, uh, towers are being burnt down, so yep. that can that that is financial damage to somebody else, right? If you if you waste your own money, that's one thing, but if you waste somebody else's money, well, that's you know, that's bad. Um, towers can damage people, yep. damage property, uh, you know, burn houses, and then while the tower is not functioning, nine eleven services or whatever yeah. whatever you call them there, right? Um, those are down. So if if the tower's on fire and somebody tries to call the the fire department to say that the tower's on fire, you can't make that call. Yeah, and not uh, to mention the risk to uh, any sort of engineers coming to sort the problem out, or like you say, the the first responders uh, wasting their time as well. Yeah, um, yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's a pretty it's a pretty bad one, isn't it? Um, if we're talking about. I mean, some conspiracies are harmless. Uh, we, we talk about Flat Earth quite a lot. It's in, yeah. It is fairly harmless, but it can lead to other things. But this one is, it seems to have more of a, uh, more of an edge to it, doesn't it, in terms of how dangerous it can be? Yeah. And, and, and yeah, and then so then if somebody thinks that somehow it's linked to the vaccination, then they might not get the vaccination. Yeah. And there can be negative health consequences Absolutely. from that. Yeah. Um, I, mean, I always sort of think about this as being a sort of, you know, we are at the start of a new religious movement and people like Kate Shemirani, uh, Mark Steele, uh, they're, they're high priests in this new religious movement. Someone like David Icke is, a, you know, he's a, he's a bishop or maybe even a pope. Yeah. He's somebody who is, is, is creating a lot of nonsense that's filtering down. And, you know, we, we can trace some of the ideas um, you know, if you listen to, to somebody like Mark Steele talk, he'll say things like, "Well, you know, you can't catch a vax, you can't catch a virus, mm -hmm. right?" Which is it's obvious nonsense. Yeah. But you know, you, you wonder, well, where did he get that from? Because Mark Steele's not the most original person in the world. But you can actually trace these ideas. So the notion that you can't catch a virus actually originated in something called Germanic New Medicine, which is a sort of uh, post-Nazi era, but Nazi-inspired sort of alternative medicine. It was founded by this guy in the sort of uh, 40s and, and 70s, uh, Reich, I think Reich Gerber Hammer, who basically uh, believed that normal medicine was too Jewish inspired, and therefore he wanted to create his own Germanic medicine. Right. So when you hear people like Kate Shemirani and Mark Steele say, you can't catch a, uh, a virus, they are literally channeling this, this sort of weird 
post-Nazi ideology that they have somehow internalized and, and adapted. Uh, you know, and, and we're in the, the, the conspiracy movement is this bizarre melting pot in which they are taking these old ideas and blood libels and transforming them into brand new and, and sort of more technologically relevant. But when you look at the, 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 the underlying fear, you know, uh, fear against electricity was was around since the dawn of the electrification. The, the, yeah. Shamarani and Steele are just updating yeah. the, these age-old libels. And of course, with social media, it's almost like there's a misinformation soup, which they're all get, getting information from and 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 exchanging it and and sharing it and and, and yeah. links all those. So we're all, they're all like evolutionary nodes in in this sort of giant mix where 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 yeah. everyone is trying to remix popular culture into sort of ever more uh, mimetic. Uh, nonsense that, that you know everyone wants to to go viral. So yeah. so somebody like you know M- Mark Steele is constantly trying to to remix his message. He's 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 taking on board ideas of uh, Gnostic Christianity, uh, ideas that he may have borrowed from David Icke. He, you know one day you, you'll you'll watch his 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 uh, his podcast and he's talking about monopole antennas and windmills. And the next day he's he's you know, talking about being the, the, the chosen, you know, the, the lion of God and, and being in some way chosen to, yeah. to speak on behalf of the almighty. Uh, it, you know, it, 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 it's, it's really is, which, which is one of the reasons why actually I no longer consider myself a debunker because you can't go to somebody who believes in this stuff and give them, you know, yeah. you, you can't show them the 5G yeah, uh, specification. They won't read that. Yeah. They have, they have internalized their fear on a purely religious uh you know, they they are they fear five G for the same reason they might fear the devil, or a demon, uh, yeah. or or, or, a, or or a witch's spell. I get that. Yeah, uh, I mean, if if Mark wants to go viral, he just needs to do whatever he wants to do on a gate. Just a little, mm. just a little joke <laughs> there. Just a little flat <laughs> Earth joke. <laughs> um, Raynard, do you do, do you look at any other conspiracies? Do you like to combat on the internet? Oh, I mean, I used to be a uh, you know someone who liked to argue quite a lot. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I, I would, you know, I was, I used to be, you know, back in the, the days when um, the the Dover intelligent design hearings were on. I, I would, I would go on to a lot, I would a lot of intelligent design uh, and anti evolution forums, and I used to okay. argue a lot. I, now I, I don't think argument is a good use of time. You will not persuade anyone by arguing. At least I've never had. I mean, maybe that speaks to my argumentative ability. I, I think you can probably do a lot more good by exposing. I think so. It takes the, like, some of the people we've talked about. Um, I think McToon and I have done more good by describing to the mainstream just who these people are and Absolutely. what they say and yeah. where they get their ideas from. Uh, that's far more effective because you're never going. You are never going to change the ideas of the nutters. You, I, I don't know a single. Maybe you know some fact because I've seen your Tinfoil Tuesdays where you've talked about flat earthers who've abandoned flat earth. But you know what? I. I I don't know any uh, anti five years who are who are okay with it. It's, uh, but but I think you know what you can do is you, you can expose these people to to ridicule by by just showing like what what McToon was doing and what got me involved. So you know I, I think maybe maybe I could uh, uh, in, in invite McToon to talk about some of his documents, the, uh, the 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 special treats that he prepared for Mark Steele. Oh <laughs> oh my. Uh... So, uh, yeah, Mark Steele desperately wanted these, you know, to have supporting evidence for his claims. Yeah. So we kind of gave it to him. Um, two different documents were manufactured and leaked to him. And they had, um, they, they said exactly what he wanted to be true, but they were completely untrue. And we had, um, we had hidden in them certain Easter eggs. So the first one was, was uh, he thought it was a Huawei um, document on how to actually enable the kill grid. Oh, yes. But inside, in that, we had uh, both QR codes and um, Base64 encoded uh, strings. That was basically saying Mark Steele's an idiot, uh, right? And he put it on screen oh, in his videos. These and he didn't have any idea what they were. Of yeah. course, he didn't look into it any deeper. So we had those embedded messages, um, uh, and then the the more fun one. We we that that was actually like some some documentation that had been leaked ten years prior. So it was much earlier than five G, and then okay. just hand edited 
you know, these documentation files. Nice. Yeah. But we we manufactured from scratch a fake IEEE document talking about all the things that he wanted it to be. Now, he he is so ignorant of the actual field that he doesn't call it IEEE. That's what electrical engineers call it. He calls it IEE. <laughs> he doesn't. He only gets two E's, not three. <laughs> and and he doesn't say triple E, which absolutely everybody says. Yeah. Right. He calls it IEE. So this IEEE fake document that we manufactured put a, P, a coffee mug on to get a little stain and then sent him a, a, a photocopy of it or, wow. a, you know, scan of it. Yeah. Um, had all sorts of things in it that we completely fabricated, including one of the most uh, in, uh, enticing passages to him was um, the non-ionizing C, um, control of, of, oh my goodness. A, a, anyway, it's spelled out N-I-C-O-L-A, Nicola, <laughs> yeah. which is the name of the girl he shot in the head oh. in 1993 oh. and then went to prison for. Wow. It had her name in the most enticing paragraph of the document. Wow. Um, the, 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 the people to which, uh, wrote this document were ma manufactured names from, from different things, including, um, uh, Pokemon, a, uh, you know, <laughs> Dr. Dr. Whatever from Pokemon. Yeah. <laughs> Professor Oak, I think was one Professor of the co-authors of this, uh, this document. <laughs> yeah. And, and, um, uh, some weird Al references. Uh, another one of the authors was, was, uh, was one of the characters in the Weird Al movie UHF. Anyway, he put these things on his channel as, you know, I've got the smoking gun. Yep. And then we, we we did a reveal of, yep, we, we fed it all to you. But here's the crazy thing. He still handed out these documents as proof. He sent them to a sitting councilman in uh, Wokingham. Right, Wokingham. Named, um, Wokingham. Yeah. Nick, what, what's it? Nick uh, Council, Councilor Nick Martin, I think is you're referring Nick, to. Yeah, Nick Martin. He gave it. He gave this to Nick Martin after we revealed it, claiming wow. that this that we had just changed the names of the authors, but it was actually real information. Incredible. And this 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 Nick this he's he's totally in. So yeah. he's he's the one. Yeah, sitting it just shows. That's but, but the great thing about what McToon did there was that as a result of this exposure. Um, even amongst some, let's say, amongst the more moderate elements of the anti 5G conspiracy movement, it, it became a bit embarrassing to be associated with, with Mark Steele. Yeah. So I think at the time, I think he was doing some kind of weekly uh, podcast or radio show with, I, I, I forget who, but it was some right wing uh, radio channel. They, they basically deplatformed him. They said, you know what, Mark, you're now a bit of an embarrassment to us. We will not have you on our, our show. Yeah. Um, you know, that, that's the sort of thing that's effective. That, um, that yeah, absolutely. We, we, yeah. We, we reduced his voice. We reduced his ability to earn money. So another thing that, you know, we're all doing collectively, uh, take somebody like, you know, Mark Steele or Kate Chamarani, you know, we, because we've been gathering information about who these people are and what they've been up to, well, we've got enough information to make a Wikipedia page about them. So now if you search for Mark Steele, you'll find a very helpful page about Mark Steele that basically explains who he is, what his ideas are, uh, what he did in 1993 to that poor girl. And, um, you know, just by getting the information out in, in, a, in, in a more readily available way, I, I think we're, we're, and this is far more effective. If I, if I get into some kind of debate with, uh, look, with an anti-5G person, it's about as useful as debating a, a, a flat earther or a young earth creationist. At the most, I can change one person's ideas. Yeah, yeah. But you know what? I'm far too abrasive and unlikable to ever have changed these people's <laughs> minds. So it's not going to work. Uh, uh, but you know what? I, I can make it be embarrassing to be associated with these people. Well, the two of you have done an absolutely sterling job on that front. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Uh, MC yeah. Toon, you were just touch on your flat earth stuff as well because you do quite a lot of flat earth stuff, don't you? Where do you see them at the moment? Oh, they are, uh, yeah, with, with both the, the, the two different flights going out to space there. Yeah. They, uh, they are in a spiral right now. But, They're on the ropes, uh, you know, aren't they? That, that <laughs> won't stop them. No. Uh, they are, they are the, the faithful flock that won't give up their religion. Um, so I debate them every Tuesday. Uh, I have a, a live debate against a flight earther on my channel. Um, and uh, I do uh, videos uh, here and there on them and intermixed with 5G videos. Yeah. 
Well, you'll be so. pleased to hear that uh, this Friday I, I've done the third video on the Dubai documentary, and at the end of it, we really pushed for him to debate you. Uh, oh, that's so because obviously the, the last ten minutes they're like goading Neil deGrasse Tyson into debate uh, to Eric Debay. So Every I've, one of the people in that video ridiculous. is demanding that yeah. that Neil deGrasse Tyson, but Debay won't debate. I know anybody. So ever. I flipped it. I flipped it on him, and I've said, "Look, if you think you can do the uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, come on this channel." Huge audience, debate MC team. I'm What's absolutely something? sure if Neil deGrasse Tyson saw Eric Dubé do a good job of debate, debating McToon, then he might be willing to, to oh, chip yes. in and have a go. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, guys, thank you so much. What we're going to do is we're going to have a quick go of the scientist game. Uh, so this is a brand new game. Uh, Cats, last week, Mick West, he actually predicted who the scientist would be on a piece of paper before we, I even played the game. I didn't even have a game ready. Did he? Did he have... 100 predictions, maybe, and then you no, told him and he it held was a sticker the on the, in the background. The first. It was a sticker in the background the whole time <laughs> we were recording. And he went, and he went, wow. here we go, and he guessed Carl Sagan. And I, I said I was going to do Johannes Kepler, so no. But uh, <laughs> so here we go. So the scientist game, brand new game. So our guest or guests, so you two are going to face off against cats. Uh, so what I'm going to do is start reading some facts about a scientist in chronological order. And the first person or the first side to correctly guess the scientist wins the point. Now, Kat's lost the first one, uh, so he's one nil down. Mm. Uh, so are we ready? Ready. Yes. ready. Need to get my... There we go. My dramatic music. Okay. This scientist was born in 1847 in Edinburgh, Edinburgh Scotland. Maxwell. No, that was week one. <sighs> mm. At age 15, left school without graduating. In 1870, he emigrated to Canada. In February of 1876, he filed his patent describing his methods of transmitting sounds. Not Alexander Graham Bell. He's got it. He's got oh. it. Well done, Kat. That is a cracking effort, oh. mate. Well done. Damn well it. done. I mean, although I think... I prefer to think of Alexander Graham Bell as a, an engineer. Well, uh, I thought uh, that, but it, he, apparently he's an engineer slash inventor slash scientist. Uh, later on, I didn't know this about him, but later on, he went to look at uh, using light as a method of transporting sound. And he was also involved, involved in helping the Wright brothers in their first flight. I didn't even know that. Wow. Didn't wow. even know that. Um, the Scotsman. Yeah. So there we go. I well done, Cats. I no idea he to Canada. I no? no idea he lived in Canada. No, he died in Nova Scotia in 1922. So, uh, of, of cold, wow. probably. Of, of cold, yeah. So there we go, cats. Excellent stuff, mate. Yeah, one all. Congratulations. One all. Uh, did you well write done. someone down, MC Toon? I did. What did you I, put? I just a guess. Vera Rubin. Ah, uh, no. Unlucky. Unlucky. Uh, right, so there we go. We're done. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, really appreciate you coming on. It's been a fascinating insight into the world of, uh, of anti-5G conspiracies. Uh, we'll post all the links for uh, those documents you said uh, and the videos you said, sorry, on the interviews with Mark Steele underneath and your channel as well. Um, perfect. We're done. Next week, Cats, it's just you and me next week. Uh, we did have a, a guest that was going to come on, but they've changed uh, dates, but I've got an idea what we're going to do. So... Uh, I'll fill you in at the beginning of next week. Thank you all so much for listening. Uh, really appreciate it. Have a great week. Take care of yourselves. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.